Hey guys, Desletter Magic here. Little disclaimer to this video, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, sarcastic, not meant to be taken too seriously. It is slightly exaggerated, it's more of like a parody of a review. But you know, with all satirical works, there is a very big, you know, bit of truth at the center of it. So in other words, to summarize it, don't get your titties in twist over this video. It's more like, oh, let's laugh at it and be like, huh, that's kind of true, yeah, good point. That said, I mean, legitimately, 100% not joking around, the state of competitive play in Magic is an absolute joke. It is an insult to the game, and nobody, nobody, not any player of any experience level, should ever go to a Grand Prix or Pro Tour, ever, for any reason. So, that part I'm not joking about. That said, here's your guide to why you should never go to, I'll just say a GP, because pro tours are harder to qualify for, but I basically just mean any kind of pro play. And that term is not a misnomer because you do have to be a pro to play because once you're a pro, as they put it, and you have pro points or planeswalker points or whatever, something that I don't even know what they call it at this point. I don't care. I don't really follow pro play. Once you get into that level, they'll just give you free tickets, appearance fees, and free buys so that it's rigged in your favor. So maybe celebrity player would be better because pro implies some sort of skill or, you know, doing something to earn it. And don't get me wrong, okay, initially they earned it, I guess, but then after that it's just a free ride because they want recurring celebrities, personalities. I mean, pro play right now in Magic is basically WWE, okay? It's pro wrestling. Everything is rigged, and they just want to parade around a bunch of drama, and, oh, I hate this person because he's a villain, and I like this person because he's great. But then you mix in all the SJW, oh, look, we let a blind person in, we're so woke. Oh, look, a female person finally sh showed up at an event. Go us. You know what I would parade around is actually stomping out actual villains, like convicted sex offenders who are actively judging tournaments where children are. You know, maybe uh, pick up a flag and do a little uh, Olympic lap around the track with uh, that one instead of just, hey, look, a female pro player, woo! And if some, like, 13-year-old crushes a bunch of people on day one at the Grand Prix, I mean, yeah, that's your, you know, that's your tabloid headline, you know? If somebody taught a gorilla to do sign language and then he, he went six and two on day one, I want to hear about it, you know? If conjoined twins won a two-headed giant tournament... I mean, you can't not report on that. That's just gimme stuff, but the whole, ooh, look, a female player, how exotic. I mean, like, it, it, it's just undercutting their whole message. It, it's so pandering, it's so fake. And so my whole beef with it is, who do they cover, who do they follow around, and who do they make news about? And it is so transparently, like, far-left liberal nut job coverage, it, it's just painful to watch. So reason number one, the entire coverage is a complete rigged circus. Doesn't matter how well you do or how amazing, unless you're basically a sideshow that'll get clicks on the headline. Um, they're not going to cover you unless you're like trans or gay or a female. or Like if you're a white male and you go like 16 and 0, I mean, they might mention you. That's it. I mean, if you win, they'll put you on a web page, I guess. Take a picture with you. I'm going to say, you better roll up onto the prize podium in a wheelchair if you want somebody to write an article on, like, Kotaku about you. Or, like, Polygon or one of these, you know, liberal shit rags that writes about MTG. Reason number two, and I did hint at this uh, before, it's all rigged. The entire tournament is rigged. If you just brute force your way to enough, like, what is it, PPTQs, online tournaments, and other uh, GPs, I guess... I think those are the three ways it works, but either way, basically, you just you go to enough events, you can earn points that will get you buys at the events where you actually give a crap. So to say that it doesn't matter how you do, you just need to go to enough of them, that isn't true, but just mathematically, you just need to go to enough of them. Like, if you're a good enough player, but you're not just like, oh, look, first place finish, boom, automatic buy at the next one. You know, you just do really well at one tournament because you're amazing and your deck is amazing. I mean, if you're just like, you're an okay player, but you're good enough to be there, go to enough tournaments and ta-da, you get enough points for enough buys. I mean, at least that's the way I understand it. And, you know, a little caveat here, they keep changing the system and how it works and how many points equal what buys and all that. And I heard they completely changed the whole system lately. But just from my knowledge of what I've heard that's how it at least at the bare minimum used to work and uh, how bad is it three automatic buys i believe is the limit so you skip round one two and three with an automatic win and then proceed 
And that is how they keep having the same people win the same tournaments over and over and over. I mean, they don't want like, you know, four different people you've never heard of finished, you know, first, second, third, and fourth. They'd be like, oh, who are these people? I don't know. We don't know anything about them. We've never seen them before. I guess that doesn't have that star power that like, you know, ooh, basketball player, NFL player thing where people are like, yeah, that one person is why I'm watching this. That's what they want. They want star power. And I think the reason for that is because honestly, watching a lot of MTG gameplay is boring. I mean, modern is like ripping teeth out. I mean, it's it's the worst thing ever. And standard, it comes and goes. I mean, after rotation, very early on into the next um, block, it's interesting to see what people bring. I mean, that, that one tournament where... Um, uh, like a couple people top aided with like mono white and mono black vampires and then like white black mix was at least in the top 32 that came out of nowhere i mean the guy sits down with his deck and you're like whoa he's actually winning with this now that's interesting we haven't seen that before and then the gameplay is like okay will this you know unseat the you know quote best deck that everybody thought was there i mean that that's interesting but uh what has it been lately Ooh, blue white control versus blue white control Wow. I'm actually just going to close the, the Twitch window and, and just watch my grass grow out the patio door because that's more exciting. Maybe go paint something, set it on the grass, and we could watch paint dry while watching grass grow. Oh, Red Rush versus Red Rush. Ooh, Psychic Friends Hotline. Whoever goes first is going to win. I mean, seriously, like, uh, sparing a miracle set of draws, whoever goes first with Red Rush wins. I mean, I don't know if you guys notice that or not. In a mirror match, it's got to be a 95% advantage or something. I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous so if nobody wants to watch it for the gameplay you might as well watch it for the results the personalities the celebs it's like oh the underdog or oh my guy i want my guy to win because he's my guy so if you want to get featured um no you're not going to unless you're very interesting or fits with their liberal narrative and their ridiculous view of the world which uh probably not probably doesn't describe you Reason number, once again, I wasn't taking notes, so we'll just say four. I hope that's what we're on. Why do I keep doing this in every single video? The judging is rigged. Now, this one you might not have heard before, but I've got stories to back it up, okay? So once again, these are stories. This is not me with here's video proof, here's a wizard statement about it. This is just three different people who went to different GPs told me this. Somewhere around half to more than half of the judges for Star City Games at at least the tournament that one of my friends went to were trans. Trans people have a mental illness, okay? Ask any psychologist or any biologist that isn't some liberal activist nut job. If you look in the mirror and you say, factually, I am skinny, but I see a fat person, that is called anorexia. You have a mental self body image problem. If you are convinced that you are the reincarnated ghost of Napoleon, you have a mental illness. If you think that there are multiple people living in your head, you have a mental illness. If you look in the mirror and say, no, I'm a woman, I'm in the wrong body, you have a mental illness. It's like body dysmorphic disorder, or whatever. Like that's, that's what it was before SJW started screeching about it. And then everybody was like, if I don't say that I'm pro trans, I'm a bad person, quote the media. So anyway, before this entire video turns into that, I'm just explaining my standpoint. It's not, oh, I, I'm right wing. So I hate these people. A oh, Fox news told me that these people are freaks. So that I believe everything they say. No, those people are shallow idiots. Okay. I use logic, facts, and evidence. So if you're not enough of an adult to like realize that if you disagree with me that people have different opinions on things, um, get the fuck off my channel. Or leave an angry pissy comment down below because I already know you're going to do that so that I can ban you and that I don't have to hear your bullshit. So anyway, what they do is if there's like a serious question or like a, not really an argument, but like a, a discussion, an issue with a game rule, a question about, you know, does this work this way? You call a judge and then if one of the people is a white male... Uh, they'll get four trans judges on you. All the purple-haired, I'm an SJW, ooh, look at me, self-identified as crazy liberal by spray-painting my hair a funny color. They will crowd you, and so what happened to my friend is all four of them sat there for the entire rest of the game and watched him play after they had a simple discussion and clarification about a rule, and it went his way. And they weren't happy about that because his opponent was, uh, we'll just say, not white. So the judges want all white males to lose. They, they were scrutinizing everything he did, every last thing. They were questioning, oh, did, did you touch this? Did you do this? Did you keep this separate? Did you do this in the right order? Just basically interfering with the gameplay to try to make him lose. They were watching for any little thing they could do because they were pissed, 
absolutely livid that the, the, the decision went his way. And I've heard from, I said three, but it's actually four now that I think about it. Four people, four separate instances, four accounts of the judges purposely not going a white male's way, even though they were right, and they had to appeal it and get it overturned. So just, they walk over and they're like, okay, what's the problem? Okay, can, can this affect this and can this target this because this has protection? Uh, no, it can't because you're a white male. That is basically how it went. And then they're like, well, I know I'm right. You're getting the rules wrong. No offense. Go get a level two judge or three judge or whatever. And then they overrule it. And then what happens? They crowd around you again. And you get four or five, six judges watching your damn game because I guess they have nothing better to do because now they want revenge because you were right. You didn't fall for their incorrect interpretation of the rules because they're trying to rig the game against you. So now they're going to catch you doing something else because now, now, the, now it's game on. You got away with one, but you're a disgusting, toxic, masculinity, white male that's responsible for all the bad things in all of human society. So they're going to make sure that you lose that tournament. So, I mean, okay, at the beginning of this, I did say don't go to a tournament because the judges are going to rig everything against you. Asterisk, if you're a white male. If you're not, hey, go. You got a, you got a natural advantage. Every single decision will go your way, especially if it's like an opinion thing. Like, oh, he made a misplay one turn back. Now what? Well, it'll always go in favor of the non-white male. If you're a female, holy shit, you can get away with anything at the tournament. You could literally have nine cards in your hand and forget to discard, and they'll just be like, I'll just give you a game warning. Resume and keep playing with the nine cards in your hand. Like, I've heard stories that it's that fucking bad. So at least a portion of the judges are, are not there to enforce the rules and inform people and maintain proper play. They're there to, to just serve out their vendetta against certain groups of people, okay? So they're racist, sexist, hateful bigots, and they will just fuck with your game. So if you think, okay, so I'm gonna go there and I'm not gonna get any kind of fair shake, anybody who's anybody has like three auto wins, and you know, oh, now the judges are against me. Why would I even show up? Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm a tough player. I'm an experienced player. I have that much confidence in my deck. I'm gonna play around both of those issues. I mean, give him three wins. Round four, I'm gonna beat him. Oh, a judge purposely has a ruling not go my way? I just won't make mistakes. I know the rules. I don't need to call a judge. I'm not going to make a game error, and if they come over and factually misrepresent the game rules, I'll just appeal it. I'm still going to go to a GP. Okay, reason number, I don't know, five? Is that what we're on? Was anybody even paying attention, taking notes? I wasn't. According to Travis Wu, if it's a sealed tournament, about one in three people are cheating and adding cards. So, okay, buys and crooked judges... It's rigged against you, but you can play through it. People are literally cheating, okay? They will have four glory bringers. I've heard of that. I mean, look at the gameplay. People had two, three, four glory bringers. Like, a lot of them. And, you know, if you got a thousand people at a sealed tournament, somebody's going to have a divine pool sent down from heaven to dominate the tournament. Which, uh, by the way, in itself is like, okay, your skill means nothing, and the luck of your pool means everything. I mean, you look at the top people, it's, it's basically a constructed deck. But what a coincidence! Instead of it randomly being random people, because you're random people opening random packs, it's people we've seen before who get the god pool. Hmm. Hmm. That's suspicious. Well, unless you're Wizards of the Coast or the tournament organizers, I guess then it's not suspicious. So if you're like, okay, one round one, two, three, four, five, cool, eventually you're gonna go up against somebody who added nine mythics to their damn pool, okay? Like, you could pull a god pool and they're gonna pull, like, like a constructed pool. Because that's not what they pulled, they added the cards. Hopefully you're getting this, they add cards. And when they add cards, you can't win. You won't win. Mathematically, their deck is so much better, you are not going to win. There's no two ways about it. So cheating is rampant, and nobody will do anything about it. Okay, Des, I'm gonna go, and I just won't play in the sealed tournaments. I just won't go to the GP if it's sealed format. Newsflash, people cheat and constructed too. I would estimate just from what I've seen and the number of people who get caught after the fact mixed with other people's accounts of, oh, well, I, I was pretty sure he was cheating, but it's just my word versus his, so I didn't call a judge. You know, stories like that on Reddit, stories like that from my friends. I would estimate that for every one person that actually gets caught cheating and receives some kind of, you know, action from the judge, there's probably about 50 to 100 more people cheating that haven't gotten caught. And it's not just, oh, I saw it and I didn't report it because what am I going to say? I saw him take a card out of his pocket. Good luck proving it. There was no camera. I mean, that, that gets you nowhere. That gets you absolutely nowhere at a tournament. It's people who didn't catch the person. That's the point. They wouldn't keep cheating if their opponent keeps catching them. They're good at not being caught. And <laughs> I would say, actually, the, the main problem is people are bad at catching people cheating. 
I mean, everybody does the whole, oh, my opponent's not looking for one second or they're concentrating on their own deck. Let's, you know, drop a land into play or let's add an extra card off the top of my library into my hand while they're not looking. Or let's, you know, double drop lands on my turn, first and second main phase. Hopefully they won't notice because I stalled. And that's plausible deniability, so of course everybody attempts that. I mean, I would even say probably from recurring winners, just recurring winners, about 1 in 3 to 1 in 4 of them are cheating. Some of them are smart enough to just do it early on to make sure that they top 16, um, and then they don't do it on camera. Uh, some of them do do it on camera. And some of it's severe. Some of it's like, you know, master card illusionist, you know, magician kind of shit. Like, the guy thumbing lands to the top so the person would always, like, mull the 4 because they would always get land flooded... That was so subtle, it took days later before somebody watching the the um, the video coverage caught it. So d to outline what I'm saying here, it took four years to catch Fabrizio, okay? He won so many GPs, and I think Pro Tours as well, it was suspicious from year one, and he was caught cheating in like year four or even five or six. He had been winning for years and years and years, and he bragged about it. He was an arrogant asshole on Twitter and social media. Winning way too much and being an asshole about it, that, that's just classic, hey, investigate this guy for cheating. So they finally did, and they caught him immediately. After he got three free buys, they caught him round four cheating. So he cheated his way to have the buys, but it looks like he was probably cheating for four years. He was mana weaving and then not shuffling. And then I guess the couple opponents that caught him in years past, which were reporting the activity online into judges and kind of starting, you know, reputation for him, they were saying, oh, well, I just caught him, you know, not shuffling. I'm like, you're going to shuffle? And he's like, oh, whoops, I forgot. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. I'm so flustered. Woo. Oh, I'm 7-0. Oh, I'm letting it get to my head. So it's all this, oh, what am I going to do? Like, call over a judge and say he forgot to shuffle. They're like, well, did you tell him to shuffle then and remind him to shuffle? Yeah. Okay, then get over it. Like, maybe he'll get a warning. Like, who cares? So he was cheating and getting away with it for four years and winning tournaments. He won, like, $40,000 in prize money, and Wizards didn't make him give it back, which is ridiculous. So if he can get away with it for four years, all the other people who win a suspicious number of times, which is basically enough that you know their name... Pretty much all of them are cheating. But to be generous and just, okay, maybe they're just that skilled. I, I don't know how skill keeps you from getting mana screwed. I'm pretty sure mana weaving and the not shuffling keeps you from getting mana screwed. But maybe their play skill is just that good and their deck building skills are just that good that they're a legit actual champion of the magic world. Okay, well then, like I said, one in three, one in four are cheating. At least, bare minimum. There's no way somebody can win that many tournaments, or I should say, like, top 16 at that many tournaments, or day two even at that many tournaments, without cheating. Just, at a certain point, the math is going to catch up with you. The probability is going to catch up with you, and you're going to lose an entire round because of just bad draws or bad openings. I mean, you might have to mold a four, and it just, it, it happens, okay? Unless you're cheating, it happens. So without an unnatural advantage, you're not just going to sit there and go to every damn pro tour and GP and do really well. It, it's impossible. And yet people are sitting here doing it right in front of our faces. They're almost all cheating, in my opinion. But like I said, benefit of the doubt, maybe some of them are just geniuses, which I mean, that's still, it only gets you so far because probability will catch up with you. And just bad luck of bad matchups. I mean, if, if they're running white life gain removal and you're running red, you're not going to win. If you're running uh, God Pharaoh's Gift and they're running control, you are not going to win. But apparently, oh, recurring celebs. So my point is they're cheating. Everybody's cheating. You're not going to get to the top eight or even top 16, probably not even 32 without cheating. Because they're cheating and you're not. You don't stand a chance. So you're probably thinking, okay, so I'm going to go do it and just play for fun because it's high level magic and I want the experience and I want to talk to other people and mess around and do side events and trade stuff and, you know, there's vendors there and I can meet Rudy and have him sign my face for $5 and then I have Wedge go on a tantrum about it for like three days on Twitter. What a wonderful experience. Okay, reason number six, the prices are going through the roof. Not only is Wizards Collective heads so far up their own asses, or maybe Star City Games, I, I might, I actually might blame them for this. I'm not sure which one actually chooses this, but they're like, let's have a tournament in Hawaii. Okay, one of the most expensive places to fly to on planet Earth. Wonderful. And then like right after that, wasn't like Japan, like the other almost most expensive place to fly to? I'm pretty sure they have one in Australia too. Like just have it in Chicago for fuck's sake. 
Oh, and by the way, now you need a passport to go to just about any GP because, oh, they're in this weird, obscure foreign place where if you take two steps outside your hotel, you probably get murdered. They keep holding them in these exotic ass locations that are like insanely expensive to fly to and get a hotel at. And then they rig the tournament even further by paying for like, what, silver and up or gold and up or whatever tier pro players or whatever. They keep paying for their travel, their plane tickets, their hotel and like an appearance fee on top of that. They couldn't rig the tournament any harder if they tried. So then you gotta fly to some crappy, faraway, expensive country with like an 18 hour flight that stops in like nine European freaking airports. And then you gotta try to like, you know, get food in a hotel where nobody speaks English for a tournament at an English game started by an English company run by an English organizer. Well, I mean American, like American English. Wow, what a great and friendly idea. And just in general, the European and Asian ones are where all the cheating goes on. There was a sealed event in, uh, I don't remember, I want to say in the Netherlands or something like that, or Norway or Sweden or one of that, where they didn't even register the cards. Registration was, like, optional or they just didn't do it. At least in America, they have some respect for the rules, or at least they put on a show to pretend like they do. And then just the cost of admission to the tournament has, like, what, doubled in the last couple of years? And the reason for that is because nobody's showing up attendance is down the toilet, which, okay, I don't like crowds, so to me, that's a pro. But, I mean, vendors are, you know, they're paying, like, what, $8,000 for a booth or, like, uh, even higher, I heard? They're going to start, you know, not being as flexible because they're getting tight for money because less customers, less people are rolling through the GP, whether they entered or not. And that means less money for them. So if you want to get a good deal on your, like, Black Lotus or whatever, you're probably not going to. So now, oh, I just showed up to have fun and, and sell some cards. Well, now it's twice as expensive to fly to Hawaii than it is to fly to, like, somewhere in California, Chicago, New York. Actually, those places, I mean, they have high hotel costs, come to think of it. There's a whole bunch in, like, Kansas or something. Like, you know... Like, what's the capital of South Dakota? Just fly there. I'm sure they got plenty of hotels and the property prices there are nothing. You could get a house for like a hundred grand out there. If I were them, I would hold it into central locations, kind of near hubs, you know, airports, that have notoriously cheap, like, tourist prices. I mean, it's not like they need to fit 50,000 people into a venue so they, like, have to have it in California or something. Or, well, Vegas would probably be a better example. That convention center is kind of big. No, it's a couple thousand people. You could hold this anywhere. There are places in Wisconsin you could hold it. You could rent Lambeau Field. I mean, I could name 10 venues just in Milwaukee that could hold this place. You know what the prices are to stay in a hotel in Madison? Pretty much nothing. Oh, and by the way, Milwaukee has an airport. And by the way, they are having a GP in Milwaukee, so apparently, you know, it's not all misses lately. So it's a waste of time because you're not going to win. It's a waste of money because it's a waste of money. And uh, it's not fun and nobody shows up to them anymore. So... I guess we're left with, why the hell would anybody show up to a GP at this point? And if you're just like, okay, 100%, I'm not even competing, I don't care, yay less crowds, and the ticket price doesn't matter, because I'm pretty sure if you're not competing, you can just get in for free, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I've heard that. I just want to walk around, meet vendors, take pictures with cosplayers, and, you know, just, hey, cool. Um, from what I've heard, let's take a GP, average GP, and compare it to some kind of Comic-Con clone or some kind of, you know, geek convention, video game convention, whatever. Absolute shit show, okay? Completely boring, not much to do, not much activities. It's, it's a magic tournament. It is not Comic-Con. It is not a convention. And I guess with the ticket price of who cares, I mean, you're still paying for the hotel and stuff, but, uh, you know, hard to compare that to, like, some convention that has a $40 ticket, I guess. Or TanaCon, where you don't even get in in the first place. Oh. But, like, I'd rather go to VidCon, and I hate the people who run that. At least that actually looks like fun, and you can meet a higher volume of interesting people, because, honestly, even pro players are not interesting people, and from what I've heard, they don't really walk around and meet people. Rudy does because he's cool like that, but there's some more, you know, arrogant stuck up people that'll like hide behind security guards and VIP areas and, you know, yeah, I get it safety, but like if I ever show up to GP, which I won't, I'll just make sure it's one where they allow guns and then, yeah, I, I am my security. I don't need to hide in a VIP area. But yeah, I mean, from what I've heard, basically you're not meeting anybody. They just call it a safety concern, but really just people, you just hate their fans. They hate being swarmed by people who are like, oh, you're so great, give me an autograph. Like, you sign one too many autographs and it's, it's just like, welcome to hell. So there really is just one remaining reason to go to a GP, and that's if it has really good Pokemon spawns and like a lot of gyms and a lot of stops. Because you could just, you could really like load up on items, you could be taking over gyms doing raids and stuff. I mean, honestly, that's the best reason I can come up with. The rest of it, just just don't. Don't compete in one. Don't aspire to go to one. Don't visit one as a tourist. There, there is really no reason. And by the way, most of them, from what I've heard, are weapons-free zones, which magically disarms mass shooters, right? 
Oh, that's right, it doesn't, and I don't think that security is armed, so, um, yeah. So at most of these events, they disarm you, and then if there's a mass shooter, uh, guess you'll die then. Everyone everywhere should take their personal security and safety very seriously. Everybody who's a sane person should carry a weapon everywhere they go. That's just my opinion, okay? Too many of my friends have been killed in mass shootings and attacks and domestic issues in places where they weren't allowed to carry guns. I think I've learned my lesson at this point. If you haven't, well, great. I mean, it's just, you, you can't counteract certain levels of stupidity and ignorance so the whole that will never happen um sorry it happens it happens to people it happens to you it happens to people you know so a little pro 2a you know rant at the end here but hey so where should you go instead start a local mtg event put it on craigslist maybe i mean honestly you might be able to get it on one of wizards like public calendars i think i think i've heard of people doing that like, if you have a WPN number, it's way easier. Otherwise, Craigslist, Facebook, groups, you know, whatever, throw your own little convention and, and make it super chill and, like, $3 entry fee and then just get some pizzas or something. I mean, like, throwing an event is actually really easy, unless you're Tana Mongoose. Oh, I mean Mangio. Oh, wait, I mean Mojo. Wait, no, that's not the pronunciation. Shut up, Tana. That's not what it is. If you're a dumb bimbo 20-year-old who doesn't know shit about anything and you're all about image, yeah, your, your event's gonna fail. By the way, I'm talking about TanaCon in case you haven't caught that. So that's my alternative, or the number one best alternative, ignore everything in the entire community and just play magic with your friends on Friday night, either at an LGS or at your parents' basement. I mean, who gives a crap? Keep playing in your school cafeteria, who cares? That's the most fun anyway, screw GPs. So if you have a counterpoint and a reason to go to a GP or you went to one and had fun, I mean, I guess, okay, it, it doesn't really counteract anything I said in this video, but feel free to share it down below, I won't delete it. Unless you're being an asshole about it, you're like, you're a dumbass, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. yeah, I'm deleting it and I'm banning you. If you're just like, well, I had fun and here's why, and you're, you're missing the fact that they also do this at a GP, because duh, I've never been to one. I'm gonna delete that, that's informative and helpful. But sparing that, I think there is just absolutely no reason to do anything with pro play participate in it go to it visit it spectate it watch it online anything just just ignore it it is a complete and utter shit show hey by the way quick note at the end here gotta be careful of the youtube filters but um you perhaps have heard lately some buzz about people wanting to end uh human trafficking and you know everybody's saying yeah you should help fight it well what if you could help fight it literally another guy who runs uh oh wow 971,000 subscriber channel hello active self-protection it's all about concealed carry and, and police shootout situations what went right what went wrong how to handle a gun just just great guy absolutely fantastic channel he's traveling over to asia very shortly and he wanted to do a fundraiser because uh the, the company called swat or pardon me non-profit organization called swat um wanted him to train people because he's a self-defense hand-to-hand uh trainer and it's like the people who help rescue people out of trafficking so he trains them in case they you know get attacked by the people who don't want people to be out of human trafficking and then they also train you know self-defense and you know open-handed skills and stuff uh to the actual victims that they get out of these networks you know in case somebody comes back after them because they're not too thrilled they left so if you would like to help literally fight trafficking uh the link's down in the description to the uh, uh fundraiser they figured it'll be about 10 grand for the whole trip, but anything over that, instead of like, cause they said, how much should we pay you to bring you over for a couple weeks to train these people? And he's like, I, I can't do that. They're a ministry, I believe in it, I wanna help this. I'm not gonna just take money from these people, but I also just don't have the money to do it for free. Basically his entire channel is demonetized. He has like probably a hundred million views and none of them paid him a damn thing. So thanks YouTube, but I mean, it's literally just like people getting shot. I mean, I get it, demonetize it. But uh, yeah, link to his channel and the fundraiser, Um, it's currently sitting at around 18 g's so uh you know obviously they hit the goal but anything above that get this he's going to give to them as a donation that's like travel for the people to get to the classes that's training equipment that's pads that's weapons in some cases depending upon the legality of the country so hey if you're gonna spend your money somewhere other than a gp there you go also, another reminder, this should be coming up if we can get past the whole, I want your whole entire DNA sequence to set up a GoFundMe. Um, you know, my friend's eye surgery, he actually already had the surgery, now he has about 83 cents in his bank account, and he still got let go from his job. So, gonna hold a little fundraiser to help him out, pay off some of the medical bills, because I, I don't know if you guys remember this when I mentioned the first time, but um, a company said they will pay his entire surgery. There was some, like, non-profit group or something, and at the last second, they're like, oh, sorry, budgetary, this and that, something changed, boom, we can't pay it for it. Like, literally two weeks before the surgery, they, were, they just were like, pulled all the funding from him. Then he loses his job, and now he doesn't have medical coverage, so... 
Well, he does need to be able to, you know, see. So he got the surgery. He can see way better now. I mean, he's, I believe, no longer legally blind. So it's more like, a, oh, crap, it already happened, but already helped him a ton. Now let's, you know, clean up the mess kind of thing. Kind of like Wedge, except he's not an irresponsible asshole like Wedge is. Like a complete idiotic dumbass did it to himself man baby like Wedge. He's already got another job and he had to move twice to get the job, by the way, while recovering from surgery. So hopefully watch for that fundraiser in the near future as well. But uh, otherwise, in the meantime, this is a great cause to support. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next video.